In bright moonlight, the Indian Ocean rolls in on a South African beach, the chosen destination of the heaviest reptile in the world, a leatherback turtle. The leatherback is not only the world's biggest marine turtle, it's the rarest. There are only very few known nesting colonies. That's what this three meter long female has come ashore to do now, to nest. She scoops out a body pit, using all four of her flippers. She looks as though she's crying, but this is simply the turtle's way of shedding excess salt. Leatherbacks dig in just above the high tide mark. They're too heavy to travel much further up the beach. With her hind flippers, she digs the nesting cavity until she can no longer touch bottom. It will take her about an hour and a half before the hole is deep enough. This beach is one of the most deserted in South Africa, but at certain seasons it becomes almost crowded with two species of turtles, the giant leatherback, or luth, and the far smaller loggerhead. They all come here to look for nesting sites. The area is called Cozy Bay. It's in Tonga land on the northernmost tip of Natal. It lies close to South Africa's border with Mozambique, just 150 kilometers south of the capital, Maputo. The only human intruders in this wilderness are the rangers from the Natal parks who camp here for two months during the turtle nesting season around Christmas and the New Year. It's one of the few turtle beaches in the world to receive such complete protection. Marine turtles everywhere are in serious danger of extinction. Their breeding beaches are being increasingly invaded by people. Their eggs and flesh are still indiscriminately taken for food and even for shark bait. The rangers are also able to carry out research on this rare species to measure these leathery giants and tag them so that they can study their growth from year to year as they return to Cozy Bay to nest. The loggerhead is only a third the size of the biggest leather bags, about a meter long. This one has barnacles on its carapace. Apparently barnacles won't settle on the leather bag's soft, skin-covered shell. Loggerheads nest much farther up the beach, often 200 meters from the sea. They sometimes even nest among the grass and low scrub on the dunes. They rarely weigh more than 150 kilos, as against the leatherbacks, 800, so it's not surprising they're more mobile. Once a turtle has settled down to nest, it's practically impossible to disturb her. In this case, the cameraman was able to use a light in the nest hole so that he could film the whole process. The turtle carried on unperturbed, laying a batch of over a hundred eggs that look remarkably like soft, rubbery ping-pong balls. Within minutes, the eggs become harder. When she's finished laying, she scoops the sand back into the nest hole with her hind flippers. Next, she packs it down hard. Finally, using all four flippers, the loggerhead works away to obliterate all trace of her night's work. When a turtle has finished disguising her nest, it's extremely hard to see exactly where she's laid. Any imperfection in her work will be smoothed out by wind and rain long before the eggs hatch out two months later. From time to time, she pauses from sheer exhaustion. The 
long crawl back to the sea still lies ahead. She knows instinctively she must be back in the safety of the waves before the sun comes up. When protecting the turtle beach at Cozy Bay, most of a ranger's work is at night. That's when all the turtle activity takes place. return to camp. The night's crop of nesting turtles have gone back to the sea, or they should have. There's often a Cinderella turtle who gets caught by the dawn, this time a loggerhead. True to the custom of her species, she's laid far up in the dunes. Now she comes flailing downhill in a rush to return to the sea. Turtles have remained virtually unchanged for 200 million years. No one could be quite sure at what point in evolution they became amphibious. On shore, they move almost as well as their land relative, the tortoise. But it's always the sea that beckons. This particular morning, this loggerhead isn't going to make the return journey undisturbed. But interception by the ranger is a small price to pay for complete protection. Now, with measurements taken and a tag attached, she's free to meet the ocean. Those waves must feel very welcome after the exertions of the previous night. This may not be her last visit to Cozy Bay this year. Female loggerheads may make as many as six nests during a single laying season. After that, she may not return for a further three years. For the moment, all she wants to do is to swim out through the reef and rebuild her strength on a diet of mollusks, crustaceans and jellyfish. This pale green world is the turtle's true element though being air-breathing, she must frequently return to the surface. species of turtles go to mate, or even whereabouts in the oceans they spend most of their days. But now scientists are starting to fit them with radio transmitters, so perhaps some of the mysteries will soon be unraveled. What tagging does show is that turtles return time after time to the same beach. This in itself seems a miracle, but then salmon do exactly the same thing by finding the rivers in which they were spawned and returning to lay their own eggs there. Salmon do this by recognizing the precise taste of the fresh water from their home river as they swim round the coast. It's thought turtles use a similar device, tasting the runoff of rainwater or underground springs. Possibly, too, they surface to navigate by the stars as migrating birds do. For the moment, mystery surrounds them and mystery is part of their enchantment.
60 days after their mother buried her eggs in the sand, the young turtles hatch out. That surf is vital to them, not because of its sound, but because it shines in the darkness. This is a leatherback hatchling. The moment it and its brothers and sisters are clear of the nest crater, they point themselves infallibly towards the ocean and begin to row there with powerful strokes of their flippers. Much further up the beach, a loggerhead nest has started to hatch. Even as the young emerge, the totally different structure of their shells is obvious. The whole hatching process takes about four days, with frequent pauses for rest. The first few hatchlings, filmed through a glass plate, chip their way out of the eggs with an egg tooth, exactly like a bird's. Stimulated by the disturbance, others soon follow. It isn't simply a question of the leader burrowing a tunnel to the surface. Each turtle scratches down sand from above its head, and this falls so that the whole mass of hatchlings is gradually raised towards the surface as the sand accumulates beneath them. Eventually, they reach the surface, and they have no doubt which way they must go. The slope of the beach may help them, but research suggests young turtles are able to detect the reflected light from the white water of the breakers. This is apparently one of the main factors that draws them down towards the ocean. Once the leaders get clear, it's only a matter of an hour or so before all the hatchlings escape from the nest. Sand is wiped out of the eyes with the flippers and then starts the long march to the sea. The darkness of the night provides the protection the young turtles need from birds but it's also the only time when the beach is cool enough for them to endure the heat of the sand. An old light bulb washed up on the shore gives the scale. The reflection from the surf has an incredible attraction for the hatchlings. Even if the moon is shining brightly to one side, they ignore it and make straight for the breakers. Adult turtles can't right themselves once they're on their backs. Fortunately for them, hatchlings can quickly reverse the process of turning turtle. Without this ability, many would die on the arduous assault course between nest and sea. A line of debris marks the highest point of recent tides. It's sad that even in such an apparent paradise as Cozy Bay, much of this tidal debris is formed of oil sludge from tankers. The little loggerheads waddle on through it. This is the zone where attack by ghost crabs becomes increasingly likely. The first salt water they reach is a large tidal pool. Swimming comes naturally from the first moment. The loggerhead babies tend to use their front flippers for balancing and swim with the hind ones. Fish eat a great many young turtles, but the venomous fireworks fish is too small to present any threat. The strength of these newly hatched turtles is enormous. Now, after a forced march and a swim, this one's faced with a stiff rock climb. to the open 
can see now for a batch of leatherbacks easily identifiable by the great length of their front flippers which grow eventually to be two meters long and the final moment of deliverance as the indian ocean advances in greeting Sometimes the loggerheads have to launch themselves on rocky parts of the beach simply because that's where, with the protection of their harder shells, their parents came ashore to nest. These loggerheads have struck it lucky. They run no risk of being bashed about on the rocks. Nevertheless, they start swimming as hard as they can to get into deeper water. Many predatory fish hunt the shallows for morsels turned up by the waves. Morsels that could easily include little turtles. of loggerheads is intercepted before they can reach the waves. To them it must seem as though some gigantic predator has come to snatch them up just when the sea was within easy reach to give them sanctuary. The ranger follows the trail of little turtles back to the nest where the last hatchlings are still emerging. Ghost crabs are the main nocturnal predators at Cozy Bay. This turtle has a lucky escape. But the hatchlings are incredibly tough. Despite the crab's pincer grip, the flipper is undamaged. There are always a few turtles who get buried at the bottom of the nest by the struggles of their fellows. Without outside help, they'd probably never escape from the debris of empty shells packed down hard in the sand. Some of them are pretty exhausted, but they usually recover. Another night patrol is over. full of loggerheads. They don't know it, but their maiden voyage in the Indian Ocean has been postponed for another 12 hours. When you sleep or eat or play doesn't really matter in a job like this. So it seems quite natural to go fishing for your breakfast right on top of your night's work. With normal luck, he'll soon have a snapper or two, or a kingfish. But there is still work to be done. After breakfast, the hatchlings must be weighed, measured and marked, in the faint hope that one or two from the hundred odd in this nest will survive the dangers of the ocean to return in future nesting seasons to Cozy Bay.
scientific discoveries often spring from meticulous accumulation of data. It's rather like detective work. Clues are found by sheer persistence rather than by blinding flashes of intuition. When each shell has been painlessly nicked, antiseptic is applied to prevent infection. The mark made by the punch will remain as the carapace grows. If the turtle does return to nest here later in life, the slot in its shell will still be there to show it was hatched on this very beach. That night, the box full of marked loggerheads is released on the edge of the tide to join the other young turtles which are quitting their nests and reaching the sea. It seems likely that each species frequents different areas of the ocean, both to feed and mate, though mating is usually done close to shore and in calmer water, perhaps even inside the reefs. Loggerhead young are lazy swimmers, quite happy once clear of the shore to drift along. The larger and more powerful leatherbacks strike out vigorously from the word go. Thus, straight away, they get themselves into a different offshore current carrying them to a different destination. The process of separation of the two species has already begun. A leatherback beats powerfully out into deeper water, though it's still inside the main reef, which is another danger point. Marine turtles have been facing natural hazards and surviving them for millions of years. But now there's a new danger, too few beaches free from predatory man. What could be more heroic and self-sufficient than this tiny loggerhead striking out southward under a blue sky into the vastness of the Indian Ocean? A fish is swimming about tomorrow night at 8.30 when the Lonely Planet soaks up the sights and sounds of Peru.